guys, what are you doing today? It's me, Jenny, from your Health Matter channel. In my video today, I will discuss about cancer. This video is part one. It's about the most common types of cancer found in a woman. This is the part one. Men and women are different in so many levels. That includes the types of cancers they can get. There are certain cancers only men get. There are certain cancers only women also get. There are certain cancers which plague women more than that men and vice versa. It's important to know which cancers you should be concerned about. In my presentation today, I, I will discuss to you about uh, everything you need to know about the breast cancers, what is breast cancers, what to expect out of mammogram, how a mammogram is used to help save your life. What you need to know about home breast exam. Cervical cancers, what you need to know about it. Screening for cervical cancer. And how will you prevent the breast cancers and the cervical cancer. Please watch this video to find out more and hopefully this helps you know what to expect. In my screen, you can see the cancer, the most common types found in the woman, the breast cancer, cervical cancer, ovarian cancer, colorectal cancer, skin cancer, and lung cancer. I made this video because I wanted to spread about the cancer awareness. So in here, you can see the leading cause of cancer deaths among all women. The number one is the breast cancer. Sorry, sorry about that. Number one is breast cancer. The next one is the lung cancer. The second one is the, third one is the colorectal cancer. And the least is the skin cancer. So let's start about what is breast cancer. Wondering about what is breast cancer. Breast cancer affects the tissues of the breast. There are two main types of breast cancer. The more common form of breast cancer is one which develops in the lobules where the milk ducts are and are the glands that produce the milk. The less common forms develop in the stromal tissue which makes up the more fatty fibrous tissue of the breast. Breast cancer is caused by a genetic abnormality. However, only about 5 to 10 percent of breast cancer is actually hereditary. The majority of time the genetic abnormality is due to the aging process. Just general wear and tear of life causes the cells to mutate. Guys, please remember this. You can actually limit your risk of getting breast cancer just by doing a few things to keep yourself healthy. Things like eating right, not smoking, exercising regularly, and limiting alcohol consumption. This is not to say you definitely, definitely will not get breast cancer if you do these things, though it just helps limit your risk. And part of the way you can help in the fight against breast cancer is early detection. Doing monthly self-breast exam is key but you also want to make sure that you get a mammogram as often as your doctor recommends one. This is usually starting by the age of 40 years old and going once a year thereafter. And guys, as a nurse, I would tell you that mammograms are nothing to be afraid of. It's no worse than any other procedures you have to have done to ensure you're healthy. In the next um, video, I will um, explain to you what to expect out of mammogram. So here in my screen, you can see what to expect out of mammogram. 
how a mammogram is used to help save life, save your life. So uh, here I will discuss everything about it, okay? To help you ease your fears about mammograms, ladies, here's what you can expect when you go for one. This is one of the most important tools doctors have for screening people for a breast cancer and helping in determine a diagnosis and treatment plan. So once you are of age, you don't want to skip this, especially if you're simply missing it because you're nervous about the unknown. Here's what they do. First, you will receive a gown and be asked to remove all jewelry from the waist up as well as clothing from the waist up. Then you will stand in front of a special x-ray machine that has a plate on it. Then the technician will place one of your breasts on the plate and raise or lower the platform to match your height. The technician will then have your position, your arms, head, and torso in such a way that it will not interfere with the test itself. Then your breast is then gently pressed down by a large plastic plate. Then you will feel pressure on it for a few seconds as the breast tissue is spread out to take an image of the breast. But don't worry, this might cause some discomfort but it's not harming you. If it becomes too unbearable, then you just tell the technician. However, this is needed in order to flatten out and even the thickness of the breast tissue to get a better image of the breast. You just um, feel comfortable on it, okay? It's just take, uh, usually takes less than 30 minutes to complete the whole process. You need to hold still and hold your breath for a second. Then the technician will do the same thing with the second press. You might be asked to wait after it's all done for the technician to review the images to make sure they are clear. If they are not, they might have to repeat the process. Then after 30 minutes of the completion, the whole process, and then you are free to resume, resume your normal activity once it is complete. So that doesn't around too terrible, does it? It's only once a year and if it will detect breast cancer early, then it could really be a lifesaver. So please ladies, you have to do this test to be safe, okay? So my next topic is uh, how a mammogram is used to help save your life. Mammograms have the ability to check the press for any signs of disease. A lamp can be seen on a mammogram before it can even be felt during a self-exam. And since we know early detection saves lives when it comes to a cancer, this is a great early detector that saves lives. While a mammogram can't actually diagnose cancer, they can alert us to problem with the breast which lead to further testing. That might be simply monitoring more closely to see if the clarity classification or classifications multiply over time or it could tell the doctors that the biopsy need to be done so the mammogram is very very important guys it will show doctors exactly where they need to do the biopsy as well so that's it so mammograms are very important tools in saving the lives of women like us and men also when it comes to breast cancer even though a mammogram can't say for sure whether you have a breast cancer or not it does alert the doctors to a possible problem which might require more testing or closer monitoring so ladies have you scheduled your mammogram yet if not then you have to 
In the next slide, I will show you what you need to know about home breast exam. Here. Sorry. Okay. Early detection of cancer leads to the best outcomes. You know that, especially in breast cancer. You can check your own breast at home for lumps or abnormalities and call to your doctor's attention concerns you may have so he or she can test further if need to be. But do you know how to perform a home breast, can, breast exam or how often to do it? Do you know what you're looking for? Here's what you need to know about home breast exam. There are five steps how to perform your home breast exam. I will tell you all these steps. One is um, look at yourself in the mirror. Keep your shoulders straight and arms at your hips here. You want to check to make sure your breasts are the normal size and shape as usual with no visible deformities or swelling. You can see the illustration here. As you can see here, if you see dimpling or puckering of the skin, a nipple which has changed position or is inverted or a rash on the skin of your breast, you want to make your doctor aware of these changes, okay? Number two step, now you lift your arms over your head and look at your breast in the mirror as shown here on this um, illustration it's very easy and the number three step on how to perform your home breast exam is you have to check and to make sure there is no liquid coming out of your nipples not unless of course when you are breastfeeding or nursing any liquid whether it be milky clear yellow bloody or watery it is very important that you should tell to your doctor okay for further um, monitoring number four step now you lay down and begin feeling your breasts use your right hand here to feel your left breast and your left hand to feel your right breast alternate keeping the fingers flat and together you can see this hand is flat. Move the first few pads of your fingers over your breast in a smooth and firm fashion. Go in a circular motion, circular motion like this, around about the size of a quarter. Then get the entire breast from the top to bottom, top to bottom and side to side, top to bottom, side to side. Move from your collarbone to your belly and your armpit to your cleavage. Number five step. Now you have to stand or sit up and feel your breast. A good place to do this is it is in the shower. You have privacy, of course. Use the same techniques technique as in step 4 and be sure to cover your entire breast using the same movement you are feeling for any abnormalities or bumps in the breast tissue which are new to you in my screen you can see that don't forget the reminders the important reminders that you shouldn't miss it you should perform that uh, five step once a month, every month. A week after you have your menstrual period is a better time to do this because this way your breasts are least tender and swollen. Contact your doctor. Oh, sorry. Sorry for that. You have to contact your doctor. Remember, your breasts are always changing in small ways, but you want to be alerted to drastic changes that happen suddenly. 
so you can contact your doctor anytime. Don't wait and tell yourself, oh, this is nothing. Err on the side of caution and contact your doctor so they can determine what is going on. Remember, it's your body and you know it best. If you find any new bumps or lumps, make sure your doctor hears about it, your concerns, because early detection, as you know, early detection is the best defense against breast cancer or any disease. So, it is very, very important to know what you're looking for. So ladies, I'm Jenny Nurse. Remind you now go check your breasts. Always remember what I said, early detection is always the best defense against the best against the breast cancer. My next presentation I will talk about the cervical cancer. Cervical cancer, what you need to know. Cervical cancer is one of those cancers that you only women get. You will want to be screened to make sure you don't have it. Here, you will learn about some of those screening methods and what you will expect. In my presentation, you will learn about what cervical cancer is and ways to help prevent yourself from getting it and what the survival rate of it is if you get it. So let's begin. What is cervical cancer? The cervix is the lower part of the uterus here, as you can see here. Most cervical cancers begin in the cells that line the cervix. The normal cells of the cervix slowly develop into precancerous cells. Then it takes time for the precancerous cells to turn into cancerous cells. And this is why it's so important to, re to catch the regular screening. In here, you can see the screening for cervical cancer. There are two tests which are performed to screen for cervical cancer. One is the pap smear and the second one is the HPV test. Pap smear, we talk about pap smear. The pap smear test is for precancerous cells while the HPV test looks like for the human papilloma virus, which can lead to cancer. The pap smear test, it is recommended for women aged 21 to 65 years old. And the pap smear and an HPV test. The pap smear test, um, is done right in your doctor gynecologist's office. A speculum, it's a metal or a plastic instrument. They will place it inside the vagina and use to widen it. And then a few swabs are taken and tested in a lab to make sure they are not abnormal. Then we talk about the HPV test. The HPV test it is done similarly to the pap smear. But the lab will test for the human papilloma virus. And the new recommendation from the American College of Gynecology is to have a pap smear performed every three years starting at the age of 21. If you are higher risk, meaning you have had the precancerous cells in a prior test, then your doctor will recommend more frequent screening for you than the pap test is the most accurate screening test 
there is for cervi cervical cancer. So this is the most important the pap smear test. It does not detect any other gynecological cancers though, but so far any abnormal symptoms you should see your doctor right away. Ladies, aside from the regular screening, you want to make sure you're doing all you can to prevent yourself from getting cervical cancer. In my next presentation, I will talk about how to prevent cervical cancer. How can you prevent the cervical cancer? Here are the ways. Getting screened, HPV vaccine, eating right, and not smoking. Getting screened. It is the most important thing you can do in preventing cervical cancer. However, beyond that, there are some other things you can do as well. Since HPV can cause cervical cancer, getting the HPV vaccine. HPV vaccine, listen guys. Will help prevent you from getting cervical cancer. Beyond that, eating right, eating right, you have to eat healthy food. Not smoking, not having lots of sexual partners, and practicing safe sex using condoms, of course, will help prevent you from getting cervical cancers. So ladies, it's very important to follow all this prevention of getting the cervical cancer. Getting screened, HPV vaccine, eating right, not smoking, and practice safe sex. Getting cervical cancer. In most instances, it takes a few years for precancerous cells to turn into cancer cells. And most times, that doesn't even happen. This is why it's very important to have a regular screening so you can catch the cancer early because that's always your best chance. Here are the factors that will weigh in your chances of cervical cancer, type of cancer, stage of cancer, age and overall health, and if cancer comes back after treatment. Here in my next presentation, I will show you wait, I will show you how to protect yourself or how to prevent cancer. How to help prevent cancer. In many cases, cancer is something that develops because of certain lifestyle choices. Of course, smoking or sunning yourself can lead to cancer. So, can exposure to certain toxins and just in general, an unhealthy lifestyle. However, there are steps that you can take to help prevent your cancer. This doesn't mean you won't ever get some form of cancer. Sometimes you're just predisposed to cancer, but it means that you are doing all you can to stay healthy. So here are the steps or the um, procedures how you can prevent cancer from happening to you. If you do have a family history of cancer, then you probably don't want to do things which raise your chances even higher of getting cancer. So here's what you can do, hopefully to prevent it. One is to reduce your sugar intake. It has been proven that cancer develops in an environment that is rich in glucose. Remember that. Less oxygen and more sugar raises your risk of getting cancer. Number two, 
here. You have to maintain a proper pH or cold potential hydrogen in your body. A nice high pH level is more oxygen rich and an environment which cancers do not do well in. So keep your pH above 7.0. Remember 7.0. And to do this, you have to drink a lot of water and you have to eliminate soda, cola or so forth. Reduce the amount of meat you eat and minimize your consumption of sweets and eat a lot of raw veggies. Number three is you have to exercise regularly. It doesn't really matter what you kind of what kind of exercise it is. Just keeping moving is very important. Number four is get enough sleep. Your body needs that time or rest to rejuvenate the cells. So make sure you're getting the right amount of sleep, guys. Number five, the vitamin and the mineral supplements will help you maintain a healthy body chemistry. And number six, don't use tobacco products. This goes for smoking or chewing. You know that tobacco products are linked to many different types of cancers, including the lung, the bladder, cervix, kidney, oral cavity, and pancreas. So please avoid tobacco products at all costs and you'll have and you will decrease your risk of developing cancer greatly. Seven, you have to protect yourself yourself in the sun. Use a sun cream with an SPF or the sun protection factor at least 15. Reapply frequently and cover yourself with clothing as much as possible and wear dark colors. Wear a hat, avoid midday sun and stay in the shade as much as possible and avoid tanning beds and lights. Number eight, stay up in the date of your immunization. Protecting yourself from certain types of viruses will limit your chances of getting some cancers. Hepatitis B and HPV or the human papilloma virus are two vaccines you should be sure you have it, ladies. Number nine, avoid risky behavior which can lead to infection. What is this? This means that practice a safe sex and don't share needles. HIV or AIDS increases a person's chance of getting cancer of the anus, liver, or lungs. HPV, also like mentioned above, is associated with the cervical cancer. So this is a sexually transmitted disease. Sharing needles increases your chances of hepatitis B or hepatitis C. So this is all stuff you want to avoid. So please be careful, okay, using condom. Number 10, what's the number 10? Stay on top of your medical care. Seeing your doctor regularly and screening for cancers will help you diagnose a problem early, possibly preventing it from turning into cancer. So, ladies, these 10 things that I've just shown you are just some ways you can take cancer into your own hands and reduce your risk of getting it. Nothing is guaranteed in life but you will feel much better 
if you follow this 10 step that I just shown you and I just shared to you. So that's it for today. I'm Jenny from your Health Matter channel. Please subscribe to my channel, like or share and comment whatever this is you want me to tackle or share to you. And um, always remember that prevention is the best cure, okay? Have a nice day. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.